Video game music can be adrenaline pumping, somber, comedically zany, and so on. Many of the iconic in-game tracks we know and love were designed to heighten a certain emotion and go in tandem with the action of the game. But how about when a composer gets to score parts of the game that are outside of the gameplay entirely, where there isn't necessarily an on-screen event or action, but still an opportunity to create a memorable tune? One such area is the menu screen. There are plenty of varieties of menus. Main, pause, character select, options menus, and depending on the game, each of these may have their own dedicated tune. What I find fascinating about menus is that they commonly seem to be spots where the music can strike a tone slightly different from the in-game atmosphere. Sometimes they can be more playful, more groovy, or just sort of exist in a different emotional space entirely. Quite often, I encounter super funky tunes in menus, and in this video, we're going to explore some of my favorites. This first example comes from Sonic 3, and if it hasn't become clear yet, here is a pie chart indicating how much of my childhood was spent playing this game. Its main menu is pretty cool and features a Tropicalia vibe that gets you set for the first level, however it's in a competition select menu where the funk throwdown occurs. So yeah, this groove's hard, and I'm not entirely sure how many Sonic 3 players hung around the options select screen like I do just to catch this tune. Two player isn't exactly the main draw of this game to begin with, but for whatever reason, the song's composer decided this was a solid spot to funkify. Okay, let's take a moment to talk about this term, funk. This is a term that I've already used a lot on the channel, and I want to clarify what I mean. I personally define funk in two different ways. I talk about capital F funk and lowercase f funk. Capital F funk specifically refers to the genre of music you'd associate with bands like Parliament, Funkadelic, and Parliament Funkadelic. This is a style of songwriting that was internationally popularized in the 70s and features elements of R&B, dance music, soul music, jazz harmonies, and a backbeat that forces hips to gyrate when exposed to it. Pioneers of funk, like P-Funk himself, George Clinton, also brought a healthy dose of psychedelia and sci-fi playfulness to the genre. As far as defining the concept of lowercase funk, this is what I'm very often referring to and where it gets subjective. What makes something lowercase funky to me is rhythmic counterpoint, or melodies complementing each other rather than simply doubling each other rhythmically. When you have the bass playing one rhythm, keys playing another, and then on top of that add a counter line that takes up the spaces, you get a lot of syncopation between all those parts, and this feeling of complementary rhythms is what I consider funk. For demo purposes, I fed the Jazzbots a thousand hours of Throwdown capital F funk music and asked them to write something similar. So let's see what they came up with. So the Jazzbots here have nicely demonstrated how active bass lines are often the driving force in funk music and how we can build around those. However, all the parts rhythmically just kind of double with each other, so in this next example, I fed them the lowercase f funk algorithm and asked for each of them to have their own distinctive line. Part of what makes this feel funkier and more interesting is that some of the new parts emphasize quarter notes on downbeats instead of only doubling those upbeats and angular phrasing of the original line. Now the listener has a context that makes those quirky rhythms feel more syncopated and groovy. If every bot is playing the same rhythm, it is actually less obvious to the listener how much syncopated material there is. We can also hear this demonstrated in the competition select screen. There are clearly separate parts weaving in and out, creating a bed of separate melodies that make each other sound funky.
With NBA Jam, we actually get to a soundtrack that falls well within the capital F funk category. In my opinion, the dopest track of this whole game appears in the team select menu and features multiple choruses worth of a keyboard solo over a classic funk Dorian band. This solo makes use of the Dorian mode, which is a minor scale that has a natural 6, along with passing tones like the flat 5, etc. to add more, I guess, jazz? This is a solid video game representation of uppercase funk, with its groove, chord progression, soloistic content, instrumentation, all that. This literally sounds like a parliament tune, and it makes total sense that George Clinton would actually be an unlockable character in the game. Okay, so that Sonic 3 pie chart earlier might have been exaggeration because I've probably spent at least one other lifetime playing the Tony Hawk Pro Skater series. There is a ton to do in the menus of these games, from creating characters to equipping them, making purchases, unlocking secrets, viewing which secrets you've unlocked, unlocking the menus to view the secrets you've unlocked. These tracks take more of a hip-hop production route, combining samples of groove tunes from the 70s with classic rap records. Sampling was uber common in the 80s and 90s, and often leads to tons of lowercase funk due to the fact that the producer is literally weaving parts from separate songs together. The main menu from the first game samples a shut up and dance tune called Raps My Occupation. In the second game, the drum groove is actually directly sampled from an album actually titled The Drum Sessions, and is slowed down a bit. And wrapping up the trio of menu funk jams from the Tony Hawk series is the third game, and to be quite honest, I'm not exactly sure as to the origins of any of the samples that are featured in this tune. It's possible that the developers actually recreated that sort of classic sampling vibe by recording things in the studio and then warping them later, but there are just enough warm analogy artifacts in these that I just I feel like this is actually something sampled from prior records. So if any of you recognize any of the songs that may have been used as samples as part of this tune, uh, please feel free to let me know in the comments. It would be greatly appreciated. Well, I hope you enjoyed taking a journey through uh, a bunch of venues and games where nothing is happening, but there is dope funk music because I certainly enjoy doing this. And if you enjoy this type of content, which I've now started making recently, uh, please like and subscribe to the channel. I've got a whole bunch of new content planned for the upcoming month, including more 8-bit reimaginings, more analysis vids like this. And yeah, I'm pumped to see the BitBlitz community continue to grow.